Do you remember the moment your world flipped upside down? That one life-transforming event that reshaped who you were completely, burned into your memory forever. I've always longed for the off-limits, the strange, the unknown. The things everyone tells you not to do, not to think about. What happens behind closed doors, the reality behind the illusions. And I felt this deep longing for something I couldn't even imagine. It's a type of coin that's impossible to ignore. Despite being so far from what I had been taught, what I had seen up until now, I couldn't pretend, I couldn't forget. And by some weird twist of fate I didn't see coming, what I thought was impossible became a reality. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Imela, in case you're stumbling across this channel for the first time. I make video about whatever crossed my mind at the moment, my channel is a work in progress, so join if you want to explore with me, I guess. So today I wanted to talk about uh, raving and raves and my first experience with them uh, on that fine summer evening of August 2010. Don't remember the exact date, but it was definitely in August 2010. I wanted to go over what it did for me, how it changed my life, and how it changed the way I view the world. So I think it all started with the fact that I was sold an idea of the world, of what a good life, a good society is, that did not convince me. And this is not to put the blame on the people who brought me up, or anyone, and I'm saying that with the knowledge that it's just the way things are for most people, we are all trapped in this, I'm not blaming anyone. Uh, as a teenager in high school in Switzerland, I remember being very bored, having no sense of hope for the future, no idea what I wanted to do. I did the high school that's supposed to prepare you for university because I had good grades and because everyone told me to do so. I had no desire to go to university, but I had no desire to do anything else either. I was just lost. I was very depressed. I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. I had friends, but I didn't really connect with them on a deeper level. Again, not exactly their fault. We were all broken teenagers trying to make it work. And also a big part of the reason why it was so hard for me to connect to people is because I didn't allow myself to be open enough to connect with people. So part of the blame is on me. It's not just, oh my God, people around me were so bad. It's absolutely not the case. I'm still friends with some of them now. So no blame on them. I love these earrings, but they, have, they are so heavy that they keep falling off like I would dress to go out but not with these earrings because you can't dance with that because you just jump once and they fall but this is for the aesthetic okay it's very important the aesthetic but yeah basically as a teenager I felt very dulled out very blunted and at this point I met someone who was strangely a very good thing that happened for me and also a very terrible thing that happened to me why a good thing because it's the person who introduced me to this world the world of raves and terrible because this person was also I don't throw that word around too much but I'm pretty sure this person is is was don't want to think about him at all but hopefully he's not here anymore I'd like to think he's not here anymore because he was extremely destructive and I'm convinced he was some type of sociopath so why I'm saying that because this was years later this was a good few months up to a year later when he told me why he took me on this adventure basically was that he found something broken in my eyes and he decided to take advantage of it because he knew that I would follow him in the darkness, basically. Sounds really crazy, but I swear it's what he said. And uh, yeah, just to paint the character a little bit. So, I mean, not going into too many details of what happened during those months, but I guess you can kind of imagine, but for censoring purposes, I can't go in over too many details. And also it's quite painful for some aspect, and I wanted to focus on the good, impact of raves because to this day I still love that world very much it's very important to me and it inspires me infinitely although I don't go out in the woods anymore to do underground raves and I mostly do clubbing and festivals I still enjoy the music I still enjoy the vibe and I wanted to share my experience with that so I will not go over all the dark stuff that go around with that maybe in a future video if someone is interested but it's not the point of this video otherwise it's gonna be two hours long. So yeah, I met this guy at a point where I was 
hopeless, lost, and very lonely. It was around December to 2009. I had experiences over the next few months, but it's only early August 2010 that I actually went on my first rave after hearing so much about them. So before I went to this event, obviously I was introduced to the music. Music which was Psytrance. So Psytrance in 2010, what it was like, it was very progressive, I yelled dark, I was mostly interested into dark stuff, into the darker stuff, so dark Psytrance. High tech was like not exactly emerging yet, I think it, it was kind of emerging a little bit, but it came about a couple, three years later. But it was still in the work of like artists such as like Tchaikovsky and Kinja Ja. I am so sorry, I still don't understand how we pronounce these words. You could kind of sense it, but it was not the high tech trance that everyone knows today. So it was a bit different back then. And we used to call these parties Goa parties in reference to the Goa island that this music kind of emerged from. I think nowadays in Switzerland, people don't really use the word Goa because it's a bit like old school. They use the word turf, they use rave. They use uh, whatever slang teenagers use these days. I haven't been to one since the plague, so I can't say for sure. So the first rave, unfortunately for us, even though it was August, it was very rainy, not that warm. But we were very determined to go. We did not want to miss that. We dressed with the intent of going on a field in the mud. We went to an art shop and we bought absolutely not meant for the body UV paint. We painted on our faces very badly. And we went on our merry way through the Swiss countryside to reach that point. And uh, it was a party that basically it was like, pay what you want, like a donation thing. You didn't even have to pay anything, but you could. And I remember giving 10 francs and uh, I was so happy to be there. It was very basic, you know, you had just a few speakers, no idea who was playing, a few people from different ages, different styles, no idea who they were. But it left a mark on me, a very strong mark, because up to that point, I had been a very shy person. Every time someone would come up to me, I didn't know them, I would be scared, not knowing what to do, not knowing how to act, not knowing how to answer. Small talk was like the worst thing ever for me. I didn't know how to connect to people and I found everyone very strange, very threatening and very um, making me very uneasy. And when I discovered the world of rape, everyone spoke to each other like they were friends on a very equal level. No one was better than anyone, no matter if you were 17 or 30 years old or 20, if you were a man or woman, everyone spoke to each other the same way. And it was so refreshing. It really taught me something about relationships and about how to talk to people. It really made, it made me so much more open. Because in Switzerland, it's not normal to make small talk. If you go up to someone in the street and you start talking to them, people are either going to think you are crazy, or you're trying to scam them, or trying to get money out of them for one reason or another. So most of the, most of the time, someone come up to me in the street, I don't even remove my headphone. I just keep walking because like, not messing with that. But sometimes it happened that I can recognize that it's just someone that's feeling really lonely for some reason and just want to talk. And it just made me so much more open and so much more able to not judge people and welcome them the way they are and accept them as the way they are and just try to see what they can teach me and what they can show me about their vision and their perspective of life. And that's such a gift. So the equalitarian uh, way of behaving and seeing people and a very strong distaste for hierarchies and this kind of horizontal way of seeing people as just we're all the same but we're all different and you can respect that and it's so powerful and I knew that from a philosophical standpoint and I already believed in that but to see it lived in the world it was so powerful it was so freeing and it gave me a little window into a world that was kind of idealistic in a way but an ideal that could be lived maybe not every day maybe not all the time but for one night you could leave the utopia and that was so powerful that was really powerful for me so to be fair this night was a very colorful blur if you know what i mean very very wet and muddy and uh, uv paint sprinkled all over my clothes and it was very very strange and we lost a friend we had to escape and try to find her and we got lost in the countryside to find back the train station basically we were here train station was here instead of doing that we did that so we walked two hours in the rain in the countryside completely lost no idea where we were finally found our friend who was fine completely out of her mind but fine and uh, yeah that was 
pretty much how this night ended. But yeah, I really resonated with the metaphor of Alice going on the other side of the mirror because that's really how I felt. When I discovered this world, it felt like I was discovering magic for some reason. I discovered something that I was not meant to see, but once I saw it, I could not forget it. Once you open your eyes, you can shut them, they say. And it's how I felt. It's this world that was moving parallel to the normal world, yet so vibrant and powerful that it was such an inspiration. And I think I'm kind of obsessed with ideas like that. I'm always looking for intensity and going beyond illusions and understanding the world in a different way. And I think above all, to be able to live my life in a unique, personal and empowered way. And at 31 years old, I'm still experimenting with that and I still have a lot of things to improve, a lot of things to explore. But the gift that the rave culture here brought me and how it completely opened my world and made me realize that it's possible to live differently, it's possible to behave with people differently and go against what you've been taught and experience things differently and having an open heart, an open soul, an open mind. Uh, it was such a life-changing experience. And I've been to many parties after that. I took breaks, I started again, took breaks again and then switch completely music style. I went from Psytrance to Techno. Now I do mostly clubbing. Now I'm into our Techno, so I'll explain why I'm not just like a hippie, but like a whatever that is. But the spirit and the way I approach things and the way I approach events and the nights and how it happens remains the same. And that's really what inspires me the most, is how some people, they just do whatever the fuck they want. They are weird. They don't live according to what other people do. And even if you don't want to be that extreme, because I definitely, there was a time where I definitely wanted to be that extreme. And then I kind of saw how it's really like behind the ideals and I realized that it's not a life I want for me, but it's still some type of spark that I can include into my very mundane, normal life of someone who's a full-time job that has a flat and goes to work every day of the week and only have weekends and vacation to escape and pretend I live a free life. That's me being a little bit bitter. I definitely want to find a middle ground between extreme and the boring routine I'm currently chopped at the moment. I think you don't have to live in the extreme to include this free spirit into your life. There's definitely a middle ground for different people and different way of life. And I think it fits uh, my perspective, my approach of life, which is to fill myself with intensity submerge all my senses and really live a life that is fully human, fully embracing my imperfections, my brokenness, my emotions, my weird thoughts, my insanity to some level. I do not care about perfection. To me, aiming for perfection means aiming for unhumanness. So yeah, maybe that's beautiful. Maybe it's like, oh, I want to elevate myself. And some people, they really want to rise their vibration, whatever that means, or reach some type of state above everything and that's very noble but that's not my path i want to find divinity in humanness in all its brokenness and i don't look up to anything that pretends it's perfect because i don't believe in perfection because things are always moving and evolving and perfection cannot change a little tangent here but i think it's important to talk about anyway first of all because i really want to get that off my chest and also because i don't think i would be thinking that if i had not been through this experience through the cytron scene in switzerland in 2010 and all the things that circled in my memory in my mind uh during all the years during the decade that followed it taught me a lot and what i'm fascinated by again to go back a little bit to the rave movement is the rules that it contains. The unspoken rules, but rules nonetheless, such as you don't just run into the crowd and push everyone. You try to be mindful of everyone's space. If you bump into someone, you say sorry, you smile, you just do a little gesture because the music is very loud. So you can't start a full on conversation, but you can just be like, sorry and smile. And just that way of being kind to each other and respectful to the people you don't know, just because they are here and you're sharing this moment. Again, super inspiring. And also I'd say regardless of the genre or the subgenre of electronic music you listen to, the whole world of rave music, which is so rich and so varied, we all share the same heart. 
in the deepest sense. This way of thinking that the world is not satisfying and most of our lives is unsatisfying and trying to, despite that, find a way through that, to cope with things, to make life more enjoyable, more livable, even if it's just for one night, to find that freedom, to find that enjoyment, to find that happiness, to find the connections, and then take all that energy, all that love, all that motivation, and carry it with you for your other days, I think it makes you stronger, it gives you hope. And honestly, at this point in my life, sometimes being able to go out and have this little moment of freedom and enjoy music I love, and dancing and feeling the shivers on my spine because I love the music so much and looking around and seeing all these people enjoying the moment with me and we're all sharing that even though we don't talk to each other it brings me so much energy and strength that I can carry with me during the days where it's not going well and I'm not happy with my life but it's okay because at least I have that one thing and to conclude this video I just want to say that this is just my experience it's very localized I've been to festivals abroad, but apart from that, most of my experience were in my country, in my area, the French-speaking part of Switzerland. I do not pretend that my experience is universal. One of my big dreams is, would, would be to be able to go out in different countries and talk to people who go to raves in their country, listen about the experience, interview them, go with them on parties. I would love to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have neither the time nor the money. But that would be like, I would love to do that. I did make a video a few months ago about like the fashion aspect of it. And I did go over a little bit about that stuff, but I didn't go over my experience that much. That's why I wanted to do this video. I still have many things to talk about within that time frame, especially from 2010 to 2012, because stuff happened. People were mad, people were lost and lives were changed. And I would also like to talk about the current rave scene discourse because I see a lot of stuff talking about it, people saying that things are going to shit, blah, 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 blah. And the only thing I want to say right now is that people used to say that when I started in 2010 as well. I don't think things are so bad right now. The music is different, but I think the experience is really similar. And I think at the end of the day, what matters is having fun and enjoying yourself. I'm not really a discourse person, I have my opinion, but I most of the time I don't really share it because I don't think uh, it's that important, but sometimes I hear stuff and I'm like, I really don't agree and there's no voice totally telling that, so maybe I should say something. I realized I got lost in my thoughts and forgot to conclude this video. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't hesitate to subscribe and give a like or a comment or whatever. And uh, I hope to see you around for the next one. Bye!